Man, are you in a space shuttle? One could think that. Isn't this isn't this quite something here? They call this the mushroom here, and they call it that for looks like a mushroom. But it gives kind of a helicopter-like uh, visibility to this airplane. Up, down, side, back. You can see everything you want to see in the CT. And here's our market leader. Various versions of the CT airplane, but this is the LSA market leader, way out in front of everybody else at present. And uh, probably likely to hold that position now that they're in what is their third generation of the CT. This is the CT LS. Now, what did they initially come to the market with? Well, originally it was just called the CT, and then it went to CT2K, and then CTSW. Uh, those are all steps along the way to take a European airplane, quite successful overseas, almost 1,500 of these flying in the world. Uh, they brought it to the United States, but then they went, hmm, for Americans and for the slightly larger market that the LSA aircraft versus a microlight in Europe offered, uh, they knew they could do some more things. So this one came out and it was introduced in January of 2008. The LS model uh, added some uh, extra cabin space back here. You got a nice hat rack position. Uh, behind the seats there is a storage that you can get at uh, to put longer things in and then cargo is on the outside of the airplane. We'll look at that in a minute. But lots of little places to uh, put things in the airplane. For example, if you can bring your camera down here, you see it's got a little floor opening here where you can carry some things you might want to have with you in flight. And of course, map pockets on the sides of the doors here. I'll bring the door down, and there's more pockets up here, more spaces down here. They've been pretty clever with this design. In fact, uh, one of our leaders in the uh, light sport business, Phil Lockwood, thinks that this one is born of aeronautical genius. I think that's just about an exact quote. It's a high speed, very capable airplane with uh, very long endurance. Now, my impression was that the first airplanes were more glider like, with a longer wing. Your impression is correct. They uh, did come to this country with the uh, the CT2K. Had uh, I believe the glide ratio on that was about 18 to 1, which frankly I, I love. I'm an old glider pilot, so that kind of thing uh, was good for me. But for a lot of pilots, it was hard to get it on the ground. So the SW is actually stands for shorter wing, and that's what it was, and that made it a little more Americanized for those folks that have been trained to fly in a Cessna or Piper or something like that who weren't used to such a long glide. Now, control system-wise, what are we using for control? A dual joystick, throttle in the center, all your controls in the center, all very convenient here. This uses a, uh, a center brake, which is right here. It does not use differential steering, but the, the responsiveness of the pedals is such that this airplane will maneuver around at an airport ramp very well. You don't need differential steering on this airplane. And flaps on this one? Flaps are located right here in the center, and uh, this one's a little different than some of them that way, and if it was all lit up, we'd see the flap indicator right here, but here are the positions. You just turn it to it, and it goes to it, and it's a very smart system, but you notice there's some numbers here. It says 35, 30, 15, 0, but there's more. There's minus 6. This is what's called reflexing, meaning that the flaps actually go up a little bit from their neutral position, which helps it scoot along a little faster. Now these seats are also unique, Dan. You mentioned there's some adjustability built into it and a little bit of a, a little uh, ball down here that I use. What do I use yeah. it for? Well, they're, they're adjustable. First of all, they're adjustable floor and a half. Uh, with a, uh, there's a cable down here that you, you see I've just moved the seat back and forth. So that moves in flight. There's also an adjustment in the back that allows you to adjust the seat up and down a little bit. But then one more feature, and this is something I love because uh, my back gets a little sore after I sit in, a, in an airplane for very, very long. Well, a lot of seats, even in modern cars, don't have any support here, right in the lumbar. But if you can bring your camera right down here, I've got a little bulb in my hand. And as I squeeze on this bulb, I'm pumping up the lumbar support here. And then with a release valve so you can adjust it just like you like. You know, if you sit in an airplane, as long as this thing will take you, you might want to have access to that kind of change so you can just be a little more comfortable. But nice headrest. This is a very comfortable airplane to sit in. And it looks like you've got a lot of ventilation going through the cabin and the doors and the uh, vents. They use the Mechaplex system here. I think I'm saying that correctly. And uh, so you've got uh, a, a nice inlet here, but you've also got uh, some additional air inlets uh, up here. You can adjust your cabin heat and so forth. And uh, this airplane has got quite a bit of ventilation flow through to it, so it's very comfortable to be in, even in a warmer climate. This airplane up above my head here, and it's visible on both sides. Uh, you've got an actual sight gauge so that you can tell how much fuel you've got in the most dramatic way. And uh, up here a little further, if you can get your neck in there and uh, observe, you've got some nice. Uh, 
uh, windscreens that just, uh, excuse me, sun visors that fold down in front of you and can fold up all out of the way. Plus, I've got visibility above me, I've got visibility up here. And uh, this uh, carry through that we see right here in front of me, this is the spar carry through because as you look out the window here, there's no strut. One of the reasons why this is such a clean and efficient airplane that moves through the what this guy so well. Right here, this is one of the wider cockpits we've got. This is 49 inches wide, and the old benchmark is the Cessna 172 that so many people have been in. That's 39 inches wide. This is a full 10 inches wider than that. So some big people can be in here, and they're very comfortable. Get a little armrest as well. Uh, but uh, in addition, when they came out with the LS, they added these quartering windows like you see right behind me. So I could turn around and I could check the tail from right in my cockpit position. The uh, cockpit uh, and the panel in the CTLS, this is standard equipment. There's, there are no options that to be seen here. Dual screen dyne on the D100 and the D120. Uh, flight instruments, engine instruments, but those can be swapped around or split screen. Lots of options there, just like they are with all the Dynon equipped airplanes. The uh, GPS 496 from Garmin uh, comes standard. They have installed the 696 in here as well, and they've got plenty of room in here to do that and radio stack. A nice arrangement of uh, switches and knobs. And here's one thing I really like. The fuel cutoff is right here, and, and here's your key ignition. So when you put the fuel in the cutoff position, you cannot get your key in. You have to put the fuel on before you can start the engine. That makes sure that you don't taxi out, get into takeoff, and went, oh no, I still got the fuel in the off position. Nice feature. In the center here, right between and easily accessed by both pilots, you've got brake, throttle, choke. But then we start a series of little wheels, you see. Here's a stabilizer trim. Stabilizer trim they have a later trim, excuse me, rudder trim and aileron trim. Now that's something you don't even find on a lot of GA airplanes with indicators to show you where they are in all conditions. And uh, one more little feature, once you pull the parking brake on, uh, then you just twist down to it's already in the on position here and I don't want to take it off today, but that's how you set the parking brake in this airplane. So pretty much if you want it, CTLS seems to have provided it. Uh, this airplane comes standard with a lot of things, and one of them is a full airframe, airframe parachute. Comes with the price, not an option. And this is the exit point for it. Now this is a specially prepared panel uh, that will stay in position at any speed, but once you activate the uh, handle inside the cockpit, a uh, rocket motor will fire and knock this out of the way and snatch that parachute out of there in no time. We can look inside the baggage compartment and see a little more about that. New feature on the LS is a, a locking baggage compartment. Very simple here, and then that just dangles down there. That's by that's deliberate, so you have full access to it. But as you can look back in here, a little awkward to get in there and view it. But you can see the whole parachute system, the canister that holds the parachute is right in there, and then you've got all kinds of baggage area. You can see I can't even reach as far back as it'll go. You can carry as much as 55 pounds per side. Three blade composite prop is standard. 100 horsepower Rotax 912S is standard. In fact, just about everything seems to be standard on this airplane. And that gives it a nice cruise. This is one of our high-speed cruisers, very close to the 120-knot limit, all day long at 115 knots at 75%, where it burns about four gallons an hour and gives you that long range that we talked about earlier. So if we want to get more information, Dan, where do we go? Well, you can go to the uh, flightdesignusa.com website. So Flight Design, the name of the airplane, USA following that, no spaces or dots or anything, flightdesignusa.com. And do you have a flight report on this? I've had the pleasure to fly, I think, just about all of the CTs, including way back in 95 in Europe before they came to this country. Those are all available on bydanjohnson.com. That's bydanjohnson.com.